Hello everyone, welcome to Rugby Nation, a very special Rugby Nation here in Tokyo. We're out in Musashino City where the classic Wallabies are playing a game right behind us as you can see. We've dragged Morgan Turanui from the field to participate alongside him, Ben Kimber, respected, uh, what are you, respected former rugby former. rider? Former, Together I think, I think they respected is a bit superfluous to be honest. Let's just take By that some. back. Small, Together small they player. actually represent the Rugby Ruckus podcast. The uh, This is a bit of a collaboration, I think Kanye would call this, wouldn't he? It is, mate. It is. The Rugby Ruckus meets the Rugby Nation. Rugby Nation. Obviously, we've got a great game going on behind us. The Classic Wallabies are taking on Classic Japan. Morgs, you've been involved with this organisation a lot. Run us through what's going on here today. Yeah, I've never been happier to be dragged from the field. It's been brilliant. <laughs> Thanks for the rest. So that's good. It didn't take much to drag you, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, today's a really good example, actually. Um, it's a full day of festivities with the Classic Wallabies involved. We've had girls uh, festival of rugby this morning, including mm. PLC from Sydney, coming yep. out to play local Japanese girls' schools. I've got a kids' clinic after the game. We're playing Classic Japan, which is, as, as we found, they're probably their first game ever, especially in Japan. And we asked them if they could get sort of 15, 20 players together. They've turned up with 70. So we've had an, like an over 45 touch game with some of their yep. older players. They've got guys from, you know, 87 World Cup squad. We've wow. travelled a long way to come here. And then the kids' clinic at the end is really the core part of what the Classic Wallabies are about. We've been around, a lot of people would have seen mm. uh, regional Australia, into the Pacific, up here in Asia, leading into the World Cup, pretty much all around the world at the moment, yep. and especially where the Sevens are played too. Uh, just teaching core skills and keeping our classic Wallabies involved in the game and keeping connected as well to look after each other. So uh, today's a great snapshot of exactly what we're about. There's no shortage of them. How many did they come up with? 73, I yes. think, in the end. There's one guy out there who's 77 years old. So. Do you reckon you'd have him covered? Or? I think he went through him. I think he had me for five metres, but I think I got there eventually, yeah. Um, ben, you've been hanging out with Morgan this week in the Classics. Um, what sort of impression have you got of the work they're doing in the community? You went to a nice dinner the other night. Yeah, I did, mate. It's a fantastic organisation. It's great to see. Uh, they've really got their, 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 you know, their hearts in the right place. They're mm. looking to promote the game, get things you know, on track for Rugby Australia, get involved more, and use some of these names, these old names that you see out here. And it's, there's some big names out there. George yeah, Smith's out there. Yeah, Sam Smith. Cordingly, Sam Payne. Who else, Morgs? There's a whole yeah. raft of the guys. Yeah, heaps of guys. But the great thing too is it's across generations. Yeah. Tim Gavin, Marty yeah. Roebuck. Sat next to Marty Roebuck yeah, in the stands. Yeah. Unfortunately, he's not on the field. He's too smart for that. But you know, <laughs> he was our physio at the Waratahs and a World Cup winning mm. Wallaby fullback. Like some special names, George Smith, 111 tests. He still looks guy, fit, mate. Yeah, all, all right. the guys yeah. from my generation as well. And actually, Timmy Gavin, a couple of his kids are out there. So he's playing out there with his kids in a classic Wallabies jersey. Just a, yeah. a great fun way to be connected. And as you can see, they've, they've turned up and everyone's enjoying themselves. Morgs, it's the first, it's the first uh, program I've seen where the weights aren't listed, though. There were no weights listed next to the players. Yeah, there's a few clauses in, in participation. <laughs> One of them is that, you know, like you see the World Rugby Sands, they're redacted. All yeah, weights yeah, are always right, redacted, right. yeah. Understood. Uh, and one shameful absentee is Adam Fryer, who I believe... Uh, Turned down the invitation. He's just a little bit scared, uh, was he? Well, I don't know. He might have told you that, but actually, he didn't get picked. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, he put his hand up. <laughs> he's been keen. He's been ringing a lot. He's been in training all year. He actually played for Ramick this year to be in training for mm. this game. And unfortunately for Adam, just didn't get selected. But that's you know that's the way it is with elite teams. And uh, great crowd, as you can see behind us. What are we? We said it was about three or four thousand. Easy, yeah. Super League yeah. style. That's 10, 20, 20,000. Mate, the off-field stuff's great too. There's goldfish scooping, ring toss. Right. There's a whole lot of stuff going on. Some cold beers out there as well. Listen, it'd be remiss of me. Morgan's got to run off and, and go on play in a little bit. But while you're here, mate, you're a very respected mind. Wales Wallabies tomorrow. How do you see that one panning out? We always match up well against Wales. I, I feel like that's a game that's easily winnable. Yeah, that's exactly right. The, the most previous one, obviously, in November was 9-6 against us. Mm. But before that, we've had, what, a dozen in our favour. Uh, and it's funny that, you know, the, the experiences of the guys in that Wallaby team uh, tomorrow it is now, They've had lots of success mm. against Wales. They'll know that they're always tight games. I'll know that you know, it comes down to a kick, comes down to the last two minutes, and we've got those experiences in a gold jersey out there tomorrow that we'll be able to find that at the end of a game because they've done it against those red yeah. jerseys. And we can't underestimate that. It's going to be a really good clash of styles too between Gatlin and Czech. Mm. Mm. Um, funnily enough, truthfully, I love it when Czech talks about siege mentality. That's when I know he's focused. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's when I know he's ready Us to go. Us versus everyone. The <laughs> only better thing we could have done with selection was probably pick him at number eight, and then we would have won for sure. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but I, I'm... Pretty confident in our Wallabies. What's been great too is in Sapporo last week and in Tokyo, there is gold everywhere. Everywhere. There's yeah. green and gold kimonos. There's even the uh, yeah. the pineapple Father's yeah. Day shirt everywhere that I didn't think anyone Mate, would get. Raylene Castle's wearing that yeah, one today. Even uh, it's even in this crowd, Morgs, there are families. Yeah. There are mums and dads and, and little kids coming out to you know support the Wallabies and the classic Wallabies. So that's actually not something you see a lot when you're touring around the world with. Um, covering rugby. Yeah, well, we're also really critical of our game, sometimes rightfully, whatever, but the last 10 days in, at the World Cup, it's reminded me how good a game 
Wallabies, not yeah. just over the world, but in Australia, there is so much support for the Wallabies. I love how our fans put their gold jerseys on and come out and support us on the big stage. It's been a great, great 10 days for Australian rugby. Mate, if you have to put the mic down at any point, let us know. Gonna, well, actually, I'm pretty happy to run. stay here as long as I can, but I better run. Mate, wait, mate when yeah. he runs away, check the number on his back. He's the reserve prop today, I believe. Right. It's the only jersey I could fit in. Yeah. <laughs> if you've got boots, you're more than welcome to come. <laughs> Thanks, mate. That. Appreciate Thanks, your pleasure. time. Thank Benny. you very much. See you, champion. Yep. Good work. See you, Thank you. Benny, we'll keep rolling, mate. Wallaby squad named yesterday. Bernard Foley back in at 10. Yep. Um, obviously, Will Genier in at 9. Curly Beal out. Dane Haylett Petty in. Surprised by those changes? But I was. Um, I, I've seen Michael Checker come out since and say that you know it wasn't a knee jerk; it was planned. Mm. I find that hard to believe. I hope it was the case. Mm. If this was the plan, if the team knew about it, but you've got to look at the way that Foley's been used leading up to this game. That mm. Genia, if it's a horses for courses, I can't see it. Mm. We're looking at maybe a wet track. Uh, Wales is a team that you know pro probably almost the flip side of the way you think about Australia and Wales. Wales are going to be hard and fast out wide, mm. and it might be that we've got to play the kind of game we played in that second half against Fiji with it in the forwards and with a tight kicking Agreed. game. Now, the thing about Foley for me is I worry he's not our best territory kicker, our yeah. best tactical kicker, and that's going to be important as we've seen so far in the Cup. I think you might get a bit of pay out of Genia in that sense. I think that the kicking out of nine has been become really important, but I, I take your point, and... What I think Checker likes to do is set blokes up with challenges, right? And, and, yeah. and he's certainly put Bernard Foley in the seat to stand up and rise to the occasion, hasn't he? And yeah. he's a guy who's played 70 tests. He's, he's no mug. Oh, he's no mug. Yeah. He's absolutely no mug. Look, look. I said, yeah, Bernard Foley, you know, I'm not here to, to um, denigrate him. I'm yeah. just, I just think if, you, if you're talking about this was a planned game to pick him for, yeah. I find that a really interesting call. Yeah, yeah. So what does that say around the way Checker wants to play the game, that he wants yeah. to see the game? Another guy who's out there who could probably play tomorrow. We could go three sevens in the back row. George Smith, uh, two sevens. We okay with it in the Fiji test? It really didn't manifest itself in any way, did it? Yeah. Look, and I saw I saw a good yarn today talking about the fact that Pocock really felt like he was out of the game there. That he was getting mm. penalised out of the game. He can be so influential. George Smith is still fit, and I had a good chat to him at the Classic Wallaby dinner the other night. Uh, he came out previously and said that he personally would pick Hooper in front of Pocock, but yeah. it was for leadership, not for style. You know, the continuity in the team. The, poop, the, the Pooper combo yep. is one that is a really interesting call by Checker to, to, consist, to, to persist with. I was kind of surprised. I thought Fiji was a game they might want to use it and then switch mm. it up for Wales with some ball carriers. So a lot of pressure there. But if there's one thing that, that I'm um, certain of, David Pocock is one of the great, best players out there. So he's going to sure. be influential. And I think that's where it comes to with Checker. He, he, he just can't see himself putting David Pocock on the bench or, or a Michael Hooper on the bench. I, su I suspect that the two sevens will be more impactful in this game. Wales are going to try and hold possession and wear you down patiently, 20, 25 phases. On yep. your line, you're going to need a, a circuit breaker in that zone, and that's, a, that's where Pocock, I think, will get more looks at the ball. I'll tell you one I do like is Beal back on the bench. I, I'm a big fan of Key. Like we saw with Will Genny, I'm a big fan of some sort of X factor being able to be injected into the game, which we saw it in the 2015 World Cup. And I think you need something like that um, in the second half, you, you, the strength of your team is often defined by the finishers. It, it's sort of a, it's now a cliched word, but you need blokes who can come on and finish a game for you. Yeah, look, you might correct me if I'm wrong on this one, but I feel like Michael Checker made that acceptable. Like the, what he brought yeah. to the Wallabies from 2015 onwards was to talk about that. You know, it used to be the bench and the, and the starting 15. Michael Checker really brought that focus to every single player has a role to play. Mm. And Curtly Beale is a fantastic talent, but you might be right. It might be that the best you get out of him is when he's got the mindset, I'm going to come on here and change things up. Mm. So Dane Haylock Petty also, you know, we're going to expect Dan Bigar and the Welsh to go to the air a lot. Mm. So Dane Haylock Petty may be that, that bit more of a, a solid choice under the high ball. Mm. Um, that might change the way that we counter-attack. DHP's also got a reasonable boot. But I love the idea of Bill coming out there with maybe 30, 30 minutes, 25 to go. Mm. Uh, game in the balance, it should be a tight one. And Bill saying, get out there and start and carve them up. We saw last week uh, just the impact of Genia. Just knowing what to do in a World Cup environment feels like its own skill in itself, doesn't it? You know, like you, and, and check, I think we have the most capped squad. We do. Yeah. We do. Yeah. So I think that Czech has always been looking for it. He did in 2015. Those greybeards, just that sense of composure, even when a game's not going your way, that you don't panic. Yeah, exactly right, mate. It was actually, and one of the things that, that I liked about our lead up to the World Cup was, prior to that, you know, the feeling was that we had a first 15 and, and, and not enough depth behind some of those positions. But this yeah. year, we've, this season, we've really come along and seen the bench is now strong. 
I was I was looking at Nick White and saying the game that he brings, you know, the kicking game in particular. I was very keen to see him get that starting role, and he did. But I, but but Will Genia having him come back in now and having both those guys being involved is excellent. Okay, now you wouldn't believe it. We have lasted what seven or eight minutes, and we haven't mentioned a head high tackle once. <laughs> Not once. There's probably been a few talked, in the background, has there? There probably has. We haven't talked about high tackle frameworks. We haven't talked about judiciary. But, unfortunately, we have to. And, Ben, I know that you're not one to shirk your opinions. Yeah. You're not a fan of what's going on at the moment, are you? Mate, the, thing that, the, the real problem that I have is I feel like they're playing it out in real time trying to get somewhere. You know, mm-hmm. it, feels, it feels like all this should have been happening in the, prior to the World Cup. Teams should have been in the World Cup with absolute clarity. Instead, it feels like a crackdown. And the Hodge thing, right... You can look at it from any number of angles, and yes, people have seen different things in it, and it's always amazing in hindsight and slow-mo, yeah, yeah, etc. Yeah, yeah. But it felt like that was uh, over-egging it. It felt like he, he's, it's been too much of an impact on uh, Hodge out of that. I didn't think it was a, a, a fair outcome, if I could put yep, it that way. Yep. But I feel like they're really tight in the screws, and it and it's been hasn't been something that has been um, brought to the front enough, you know, through the season so far, yep. so that we knew it. Instead, it feels like they've had to crack down because the players are now being told, that's it. It's been a three-week-a-thon. Yeah. Everyone's getting three yeah. weeks. Yeah. So that, that doesn't seem like a, anything to me that's been particularly well-constructed going in. Well, you've hit the nail on the head there. I'm actually OK with Reese Hodge getting suspended. I think that the, the, the material evidence shows that a shoulder hit a head. It may not be great that it was an accidental collision. I'm prepared to say, yep, ticks the box. Six weeks mandatory sentence? It seems like too much for me, even if yeah. it goes down to down to three as we see Japan score a rare try. Uh, Going down to even three, that's too much. Somehow you jump from not guilty to six weeks. There's no middle ground, you know. Like, I think if you're looking at that sort of offence, Reece Hodges tackle, one-week ban, that's more than enough. So, So for me, like... I'm happy with, you know, if they've got a framework and they've got rules. I think one of the things that was very confusing, and, and Morg's fired up on our podcast about this, coming out of, the, uh, out of that judiciary uh, process, was that they, they were talking about the framework and that there were other elements that were yeah. involved that yeah. weren't in the framework. Yeah. Well, if that's the case, that's, that's ludicrous. Mm. Tomorrow is going to be a massive day. Uh, yep. I'll put you on the spot, Benny. What do you think is going to happen? But I think as history has shown, these two teams will go tight. Um, that, mate, I'll give you the heart and the head. The heart says the Wallabies, but the head just says... Bit of rain coming. The kicking game that Wales has compared to ours, I think they might just edge us, but I'm going to be cheering for the Wallabies. I think you're probably bang on. I reckon that Samu Karevi may be the man who's going to win it for Australia. I can see him just being the one man. One or two opportunities, scoring opportunities, you've got to take him, and that's where I see it being one. But that's all we got for you today. Thank you very much for the Rugby Nation collab. Ben, appreciate it, mate. And pass on our thanks to Morgs again. When he, do. Is he out there? Mate, he'd be out of puff. I think he just went and sat on the bench and had a can of Coke. <laughs> but listen, very, very uh, enjoyable Rugby Nation and I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your trip. Mate, thanks and for uh, us. guys, we'll see you on Monday for more Daily Wrap.